just check with embarking. With embarking. Right. Hello YouTube. Welcome to the um, second episode of the uh, COVID-19 episode. Once again, back in my garden. I was going to do a bit of a kit review. So, I want to have a look at all my kit. Uh, I'm going to do each one in turn. Um, and I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about each each thing. I'm just going to show you what I use, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, and if you've got any questions or you want to know any more, hit me up in the comments uh, or get in touch. Find, yeah, find another way to get in touch, why not? Um, so, we'll start with helmets. First helmet here is the Fox Pro Frame. Uh, this is an amazing helmet, I love it. And yes, it's a bit dirty at the moment. So, it fits really well. It has the MIP system for safety, uh, take out the rotational features. I love the way it fits on my head, it's comfortable, it is durable, the only thing is you can't remove the chin piece so on the climbs it does get a bit hot and sweaty but that's okay, I'm willing to, to cope with that because the, um, the one thing I like about it uh, more than anything else um, which is probably controversial but I can mount the camera to my chin and I prefer that because in the videos you get a nice view of the bars, you get a nice view of the trail and what's coming up ahead as well and that's something that I really really uh, enjoy now, just for illustration purposes so the camera mount on the chin down there a nice little um, rapid prototype part here that I got off eBay that fits nicely nicely in the chin piece of this helmet and then a curved curved extension piece to bring the camera down and back so that it's in the right position you get the most out of uh, the position looking at the bars and the trail ahead um, also obviously you had acts as a natural gimbal so uh, it's nice and smooth with the hyper smooth on the Hero 7 it's even better so in terms of safety it has got the MIP system as I said it's got a rigidly mounted visor but it is one that pops off and out of the way so that you can, um, so if you're in an accident and it does hit the visor, it will just break away and that's nice and safe. However, it'll do it in a way where you can just pop it back on again so nothing's broken. Um, very strong chin piece so that if you land on your face, very well protected, which is quite important. So, my second helmet is one that I actually haven't used yet. Uh, on the bike, but it's a recent, very recent uh, buy. This is called a Mock Fire. Uh, it is a shell helmet. Um, it has a number of uh, outstanding features, like it, it doesn't have MIPS, but it's extremely comfortable to wear. Um, so the helmet has a number of outstanding features. On the back, it's got an internally mounted LED light which is absolutely cracking for nighttime use um, or poor visibility which I'm very pleased with it's got a battery built in that you charge via a micro USB cable now the main reason I bought this helmet was because it has an integrated GoPro mount on top now more and more during endurance races enduro sorry you're not allowed to have the camera mounted anywhere except the top of the helmet so just for illustration I'll put the Hero 5 on there and it is it's one of the best uh, helmet mounts that I have seen now I'm sure you can get much more expensive helmets with much better mounts but this was 30 quid off Amazon and to be honest it's well worth it build quality is amazing it's got the built-in light at the back with the rechargeable section really really comfortable all the pads inside are nice and really comfortable it's got adjustable adjustable crown piece there and um, yeah I'm really pleased with it so as well as the camera I can also use this for nighttime runs because I can get I've got my GoPro adapter for the light 
and that is something that will come in very handy when it comes around to next winter when we're allowed out to play again um, so I'm very very pleased with that the only reason that I will not wear this full time is because I am not a huge fan of the camera position compared to the Fox Pro frame if the camera's on the chin you get a much better view of the bars and the trailer head than you do if it's on the helmet Any questions hit me up in the comments and uh, we'll move on to eyewear. So, first thing, first eyewear, these are the ones I wear most of the time at the moment. They are Oakley ripoffs, um, but so, this, so that means they're not as comfortable as the Oakleys. They've got transition lenses, so if it gets really sunny, lenses turn dark, um, which is really good. They allow a lot of airflow around, they protect my eyes, and uh, more importantly, is most of the, the um, most of the stuff I do is in, in forests, obviously, as you've seen, so it's very dark and they um, allow me to see. They are knockoffs, so <laughs> they do scratch up very easily and I think before long I'm going to end up switching to using goggles now. I have got two pairs of goggles and my dark environment pair are these 100% they, uh, they've got the clear lens they're very comfortable nice soft, soft uh, front on it they fit nicely with my helmet as well, so that's perfect. And uh, they keep clear, they do not mist up. For... So I'm very pleased with those. For sunny weather, I've got these uh, Melon Optics Diablo 2 glasses, uh, goggles, sorry. They also fit up nicely with my helmet. Very comfortable, very soft, they don't mist up. However, the lens on this one, I've got the smoke lens. The lenses are just too dark for the sort of enduro races that I've been doing so far during the winter because in, in the forests it does get very dark obviously, especially in the wet as well. Out in the summer, when we get out and uh, there's some more sunshine to be had, I'm hoping that these are going to be, um, they're going to come into their own and really do well.